welcome to part two of what is the best FNAF game. If you haven't seen the first part, then a card will pop up on the screen right now. There have been some changes due to circumstances. My old PC had died, so I needed to re-record all this footage. I also lost the save files on FNAF Hub Wanted, and since I can't play through the whole game again in the time frame of when the Ruin DLC comes out for Security Breach, I am taking Help Wanted off the list. This does make the video more fair, as the Help Wanted game isn't a normal FNAF game, and the experience won't be the same as you feel more put into the environment. I was going to tie the story into Security Breach story ending, but I have changed my mind and you'll see why I fully won't put it into detail. Now with all that being said, let's go into the first game of part 2, Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. <laughs> FNAF 4 being labeled as the final chapter ended up having a different meaning behind it. It was the final chapter of the original five animatronics, and the story beginnings of Michael and William Afton. We are now in the new age of FNAF. Welcome to Circus Baby's Entertainment Services and Rental, where you can find the likes of Baby, Funtime Freddy and Foxy, and Ballora. Released on October 7, 2016, this game was a new and fresh take on the franchise. There are so many gameplay areas used in this game, so in fairness, I will be choosing one of the areas to keep the fairness as multiple would be unfair to put against the other games, which only have one. So let's pick the room that had players stumped and scared at the very beginning. Fun time, Freddy's room. You're having to reboot the panels and after running through Ballora's room to get across to the electrical room that Freddy is in, you must reboot the entire systems of the entertainment warehouse. You must hold the panel buttons until they reach 100%. Once you get off of them, the percentage will start to go down back to zero, but you cannot hold the buttons forever, as the longer you hold the buttons, Freddy moves. You must use the recordings of Bon Bon's voice, his hand puppet. This will slowly reset him back to his idle state. You have no flashlight though, so you must wait until the backup lights flicker so you can see how close Freddy is to you. Complete that, and then run back through Ballora's gallery to complete the night. This is intense and fun but has some problems with the voice recording not working, so I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 5. The atmosphere of the game is terrifying. You are underground as a maintenance worker for the animatronics. The game captures that unkempt, untouched feel as nobody seems to be able to fix and clean the area properly. The animatronics also look amazing and the audio of the sparks and buzzing make it feel like you are surrounded by danger everywhere you go. These will get a 4 out of 5. The jump scares in this game are amazing as the animatronics scream and the face place opening as you are getting attacked really sell it to get these a 4.5 out of 5. You are Michael Afton. You have come to find your father William after William had opened the location due to a Fazbear location shutting down. The opening happened sometime before the killings happened and was shut down years later. Michael is there to look for his father after the Fazbear's fright attraction was burnt down and William escaped. While going through each night, he is guided by a little girl who haunts baby. After many nights, Michael is falsely led into the scooping room by this voice, where it turns out to be Ennard who has led Michael into the scooping room to finally escape the facility by scooping Michael, but keeping him alive to leave and head into the next part of this story. The main story is a bit lacking, but the ending plot twist of Ennard added some points to this. So I will give this a 3 out of 5. You are probably thinking I am going to talk about the custom night. Well, I'm not. That wasn't added until December, and I want to stay true to the game's core release. So I am talking about the walk to the scooping room. You move through Funtime Auditorium thinking there is someone lurking, but nobody is there. You walk into the room where Baby is on the belt, ready to go to the scooping room. Once you send her off, you are in the scooping room, and this leads to the ending. No problems to run in here, so this is a 1 out of 5.
what was suspected to be a nice and fun pizzeria tycoon type game, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator released on December 4th, 2017. This game looks amazing and friendly at first glance, but it holds dark and twisted secrets to unfold. The gameplay is in three stages, build, survive, and salvage. Stage one has you building your pizzeria with a small budget to begin with. You can buy party gear, stages for animatronics, games for children to play, and do it all with the style of risk. Risk comes into play with how dangerous is the equipment you buy. The cheaper the item is, the more risk can come with it. You can earn more money to spend on everything by playtesting the games you buy. Higher score you get, the more fast points you earn. Every 1,000 fast points is $100. The more you buy, the more unlocks. Once you are done building for the day, you move on to stage two, survive. Whilst the pizzeria is open, you are in your office ordering supplies for the next day. Your office is really small with two vents on the side. While you are in your office, you need to check to see if anything in the vents is coming for you. You have a motion sensor to detect movement on where they are hiding. You have an audio button to lure them away for a short period of time. If you hear anything that's right outside your office, you need to shine your flashlight over there to slow them down for enough time to lure them away. The question is, what are you luring away? With that, I give you stage three, salvage. You will find animatronics broken in the back alley. These are the animatronics of Molten Freddy, Scrap Baby, Lefty, and William Afton. You could salvage them for money or throw them in the back alley. You risk them attacking you and running loose in your restaurant without getting the cash from the salvage. Every audio prompt that is given will trigger the animatronic to move into different stages. Stage three being that if you continue without stopping them, then you will get attacked. You are given a taser that will shock the animatronics back to stage one. Once you complete the salvage, you throw them in your back room and continue on with your day. This gameplay is nice, but can really get mind numbing when it comes to your pizzeria as you can play the same games repeatedly without gaining so much. So I'll give this a 4.5 out of 5. The only main part of the audio is listening for the animatronics right next to your office and then the other noise being used to distract or drown out the other noises that you need to hear. Visually, the office is cramped, but it doesn't make sense on why there are two massive open vents next to you. This will be a 2 on the audio and a 1 on the visuals, making it a 3 out of 5. The jump scares aren't too scary. The main factor is that they come more out of nowhere as you can be looking one way and then they attack you from behind. But visually they aren't the best so I'm going to give this another 3 out of 5. You are probably wondering why I'm doing the final night before the story on this one. And I have to say you will indeed see why. The final night isn't the hardest final night I have done, but it can be difficult depending on the RNG of the animatronics. So I will give this a 4.5 out of 5. Michael is alive and goes to find Henry Emily, the father of Charlotte Emily, or Charlie. She was murdered by William after being locked out of the pizzeria by the kids attending a party that day. The puppet was made to protect her and failed. The puppet escapes outside to find her dead in the alley, curling up against her and shutting down holding her. After being rebuilt, Charlie's soul possessed the puppet. She wanted to give life to all the children that William had killed. Michael and Henry make the plan to build a new pizzeria to lure the rest of the animatronics and Afton to finally end this saga. Michael and Henry will both die to finish what William Afton has started, giving us the best ending in FNAF history. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Elizabeth, if you still even remember that name, but I'm afraid you've been misinformed. You are not here to receive a gift, nor have you been called here by the individual you assume, although you have indeed been called. You have all been called here into a labyrinth of sounds and smells, misdirection, and misfortune. A labyrinth with no exit, 
a maze with no prize. You don't even realize that you are trapped. Your lust for blood has driven you in endless circles, chasing the cries of children in some unseen chamber, always seeming so near, yet somehow out of reach. But you will never find them. None of you will. This is where your story ends. And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you. Although there was a way out planned for you, I have a feeling that's not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. I am remaining as well. I am nearby. This place will not be remembered, and the memory of everything that started this can finally begin to fade away, as the agony of every tragedy should. And to you monsters trapped in the corridors, be still and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. For most of you, I believe there is peace and perhaps more waiting for you after the smoke clears. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has opened to swallow you whole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die, no one was there to lift you up into their arms the way you lifted others into yours. And then, what became of you? I should have known you wouldn't be content to disappear. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then. So let me save you now. It's time to rest for you and for those you have carried in your arms. This ends for all of us. In communication. This game was hyped up to be the greatest FNAF game to ever exist. After over a year of development, the game released on December 16th, 2021. However, was it the Christmas gift all the FNAF fans wanted? The main hype of the game was that it would be the first official free roam FNAF game. On paper, this would be a 5 out of 5, but there is a big issue. The game runs poorly. Before you say anything about how I probably don't have the processing power, I do. So shut up. Running around, the game will jump between 30 and 60 FPS. Okay, things are loading, right? No, the area freezes when loading into a new zone. The game just can't decide when it wants to run properly and when it wants to jump into a bonfire. The game is also very buggy, with glitches seen all around. Speedrunners use these to beat the game in three minutes, what the fuck? Also, I wasn't even an hour into the playthrough for the video, and I crashed when I opened the door to the diner. This gets a 2.5 out of five. The visuals are 100% the best part of the game as it may not run properly half the time, but the game looks amazing. My favorite room is the green room, the first room of the game. It looks so beautiful and I'm giving these a 4.5 out of 5. The jump scares in the game are okay I guess. They aren't the best jump scares I have seen, but I will still give them a 3 out of 5. You are a young boy named Gregory. You are trapped in the pizzeria after close until 6 a.m. You try to get help from Freddy and his friends, but his friends are corrupted by a virus. The virus had tried to take over Freddy while he was performing, but his system shut down instead. Freddy wakes up in safe mode and is limited based on the power he has. You go the whole night figuring out the secrets on what has been happening in the pizzaplex, figuring out that Vanessa has been kidnapping and killing children as Vanny. The real question is why? You go through the whole pizza plex looking for new clues. You finally get to an elevator where you find there is an old Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria under the pizza plex. It has been using power for some reason and you find out why. You see Freddy's friends all mashed up into the blob and then fall through the wooden flooring. You end up in a room and going through the corridors, you find Burn Trap. 
William Afton survived the fire that burned and killed Michael and Henry in Pizza Free, a simulator. The plot twist that we didn't expect, but got. He has been surviving off the blood of the children, and before he can get to full strength, you show up and he begins to take control of Freddy. Freddy fights it off for long enough that you can burn the place down, causing the pizzeria and pizza plex to collapse. Burn Trap is grabbed by the blob in a final attempt to get rid of Afton for good. It seems that Gregory and Freddy get out, but it is a ruse as the ruined DLC proves that they are trapped after it all had come crashing down. The story is an easy 5 out of 5. I can't call this a final night, so for fairness, I will call it the final hour. This is hard. The final hour, if Gregory is caught, it is game over and you have to start back from the front door all over again. The save spots are disabled, so you must get the main endings in one go. It can be hard, so I'll give it a 4 out of 5. I have covered all the main FNAF games, in my opinion. Don't worry, I do plan on reviewing the other games that I didn't cover sometime in the future. So let's get into the final ratings. FNAF 3 is at the bottom of the list because it lacks challenge. Being able to softlock Spring Trap just made it too easy to complete. The story was the best part about the game, but other than that, it was easily the worst FNAF game out of the bunch. FNAF Sister Location had its moments when the game came to story as well. The game was interesting but can be boring at times as all you do is walk around quietly. The story of Ener scooping Michael was an amazing touch though. Security Breach was supposed to be the big change in the FNAF community. The biggest game to release yet. It was a hit but for the wrong reasons. The biggest plot twist nobody expected was massive and boosting the rating and the gameplay was still fun at times, just hard to play. I kind of expected this game to be the middle ground as it gave the foundation to build every other FNAF game out there. It was new and unique to the indie horror world. It was a last effort to make something out of Scott's career and it became life changing practically overnight. FNAF 6 had the best ending in any FNAF game. Along with the added build your own demise type feel in the FNAF Tycoon setting and then fighting off animatronics you brought into the pizzeria yourself. FNAF 2 and 4 are tied for first place, but we need a winner. There is a 0.5 bonus point for one of these two games and I will tell you why I am picking the game that I believe deserves it the most. FNAF 2 has the most fun gameplay in a FNAF game in my opinion, as it can challenge you to be better every time you play the game. It is hard and challenging in so many ways. However, the main reason FNAF stayed alive was the story. The story revealed when the killings of the five children had happened, but they didn't reveal the reasons behind it. FNAF 4 revealed how and why William Afton had begun killing. Also had revealed why Michael Afton went into hiding and then began to try and stop his father. He wanted to make up for what he did to Evan. The game is also as challenging as FNAF 2 and the area is more scary. So with that, FNAF 2 stays at a 23.5 rating and FNAF 4 takes the win as the best FNAF game with a 24 out of 25. With that, I have answered the question, what is the best FNAF game? It's been so long since I last